I talked about the the walk in which the opposing team has to take when they get off the bus. They get off the bus, you got to walk all the way across the field to the opposing locker room. And just how big the, the Superdome is when you walk in there and you don't see anybody in the stands. But kind of help me out in terms of you played in that last conference championship game that was held there against the Minnesota Vikings. Can you describe the environment of not only that game, but what you expect to see on Sunday? Yeah, so the, actually before this season, they put a big banner up. There's a, a, a big walkway. The Superdome is across the street from the arena, and so there's this big walkway. And they put a big banner across it this year. I think it's very fitting. It says, welcome to your last few moments of silence. <laughs> um, and I think that that, that is, a, is a pretty true statement. I think when you, when you go into the Superdome, you know it's going to be loud. What most people don't realize is how, uh, how loud and how almost – of a, uh, how much of like almost a physical nature there is to the noise in the Superdome. You know, it's a contained environment. Um, you can feel sound waves when there's enough of them, which is a pretty unique feeling. And uh, I think there's so much energy. The city loves the Saints so much that in these big games, it is a, it's a unique experience. It's almost physical, uh, which is strange, you know, as a player to feel crowd noise. Um, and you, and you can in these games in the Superdome, I know the NFC championship in 2009, uh, you know, and, and I've talked to a bunch of guys about this last week. I, I think the only exception uh, that, that you'll ever see the Superdome louder was Steve Gleason's punt block in the Atlanta game and the Superdome reopening. It was probably the only moment that the Superdome was ever louder uh, than it was for the NFC Championship game. The difference was that was a single play in a single moment. The NFC Championship game was four and a half hours long. <laughs> and it was like that the entire time. So it's a tough place to play. There's been comments this week that they didn't have too much trouble with it. Uh, you know, the last time they came in, uh, I, I would expect them to this time. I know certainly Brett Favre talked a lot about how hard it was for them when they came in in 2009. A couple more for you before we let you go, Zach. Uh, is it harder to call a game in, in that noise as a play-by-play -play announcer when it's that loud? And obviously, I know you're feeling your emotions as well. How do you kind of taper your emotions and, and talk about what's happening on the field without getting too overly excited? Well, that's certainly uh, I've learned uh, something that I, that I can struggle with at times. As a matter of fact, you guys play that call, and I, I've heard it a bunch this week, uh, Marshawn's interception, and I'm disappointed with it every time because – I couldn't really get as excited as that moment warranted because I had already lost my voice. So <laughs> I was kind of struggling through when it does get that loud. You feel that urge to like, you know, to be louder. Right. And uh, as a matter of fact, earlier in the game, the touch, the 54 yard pass to Alvin Kamara for a touchdown from Taysom Hill, I thought was a great call, but it completely shot my vocal cords. And those are the types of things that as a young play by play uh, guy, I'm learning. Uh, and, and it's not, you know, certainly not by any stretch a, a perfect uh, call every week. But, uh, yeah, that stuff can that, that stuff can be difficult. I've, I've gotten advice from a lot of great uh, broadcasters around the country that have been really helpful to me. And uh, number one is, you know, you got to you got to take a step back and, and, and be a little more almost reserved in certain parts of those games. Otherwise, you know, it's all going to be high and it's all going to be. Uh, it, it's, it's almost too much excitement and certainly your voice is going to pay for that. And so I'm learning still, uh, that was certainly, I know for me, every time I hear it this week, I'm like, ah, it could have been so much better. It was such a big play. And I'm up there just worrying about my voice cracking. The Rich Eisen show weekdays at noon Eastern on audience.